Hello there. In this video, we're going to look at something pretty cool, which is creating a card visual using Deneb. The reason I wanted to do this video is because at first it felt like a really complex thing to do, um, but actually it's really basic. All the elements are really, really basic. Now you might be looking at my screen there and thinking that's 582 lines of code. Is that not a bit excessive? And I take your point, but the wonderful thing is you don't have to write 582 lines of code. You've got to write one block and then do what I love to do, which is what? That's right, copy and paste. Um, and that just makes it wonderfully fast. You write it once, you copy and paste it, of course, change the metric based on what the other section is all about, and then you're done. It's fantastic. So what do we have here? I mean, what are we actually looking at? So what this consists of is actually a series of concatenations. The top level is a concat, which I've specified I wanted to see two columns. So I've said I want two columns in this concatenation, which is why you see two columns and two rows, because I have four groups, two columns, two rows, it's four. If I were to say, for example, I wanted one column, what you would see is one column. Makes sense, right? Um, and the other concatenations are actually making up the individual groups themselves. I want to call them groups um, because that's kind of essentially what they are. So one group for net sales, one group for orders, etc. And just to demonstrate that, I can show you, I can just remove the bottom three and you'll see there, that's what I have. I have this one group, which is this block of concatenation. Because I've said concatenate everything between this square bracket and where the square, square bracket ends. And because now, now I only have one, it's concatenating one thing. Just put those back in. Now it's concatenate them all together. Makes sense, right? Cool. So we have the concat, we have the vertical concatenation in each block. And I'm just going to open this up because we're going to look at it anyway. And you all might see also right there, we also have a horizontal concatenation. And what that means is that these elements are horizontally concatenated. So now we have a concat in a concat in a concat. Again, not as complex as it sounds. It's just how I chose to do this. There are other ways of doing it, but I found this the most stable way and it worked pretty well. So I want to take you through how it's done. We'll start at the top. This first group, this first block, my net sales. Yeah. So the first thing I've done in this concatenation is just written spacing six. What does that do? And just to show you, if I put space spacing zero, it just changes the spacing, of course. And you can see it move up and down slightly. If I put something more extreme, you can see I have this large spacing between all the elements. Yeah? So, I'm gonna put that back to what it was, which is six. And I chose that because I thought it was a nice amount of spacing. So, then what? So the first one that we're looking at is this net sales. So, it says title net sales. And again, quick demonstration of what this does. It's very little. It's just the word net sales. That's what it is to give you some context of what's happening. It says net sales. Makes sense, right? Um, and it's just setting up the font size. It's the color aligning it to the left. In this visual, every single time you see the word text, as in it's a text mark or it's a title, the text will be aligned to the left. Why? So it looks nice and, you know, everything's aligned how it should be to the left. In my opinion, looks good. The next thing I've done, I've gone and I've added a text mark. And the text mark is this value. It is the net sales. So the title is net sales. The first thing you see underneath that in big letters is the text, the field sales. And that's what this is. Straightforward stuff, just like the last one. Type text, font weight 600, it just sets how bold the text is. I can move that to 400, it's not as bold. 600, that's how it looks. So just specify how I want it to look. Um, and then in my encoding, what I've said is I want the aggregate to be sum. 
Why? Because if I don't put aggregate sum, it'll give me each individual value because we have a date field in there. So it's breaking it down by date. So I just want the sum of my net sales and that gives me the sum of the net sales within the date range that I have chosen. That's it. So again, a title on a text mark. That's what we have thus far. Very basic stuff. The next thing we have, now the next thing that we have is an H concat. So now I'm dealing with everything here that is aligned horizontally. I've concatenated three things horizontally. The first one, guess, of course, it's a text mark. It's mostly text marks because that's a lot of what you have in a card visual. I've specified a height because I wanted to have a certain height. If I take that away, it kind of messes with my um, alignment. So they all have in this um, horizontal concatenation, we have a height of 30, aligns it. Another text mark for this one, for the percentage. And this I'm just saying, I want that to be the percentage difference of this year and last year. It's standard measure. The only thing that's really interesting about this one is that I've specified that I want the font weight and the color of the font to be dependent on an expression, which I'm basically saying, if the percentage is greater than or equal to zero, give me a green font with a font weight of 400. If it's less than zero, give me a font weight of 400 and a text color of red. That's just a design choice that I made. Maybe it's not fantastic, um, but it's just to highlight what you can do and how you can make certain things stand out just a little bit. To be honest, the fact that it says minus should be enough, but that's just what I chose to do. Everything that falls between this square bracket and this concat in here is that middle line. Nice and straightforward, really. So again, removing this, will remove this entire middle line. See, it's gone now. Why? Because they were the three marks that were horizontally concatenated. The first one is percentage. The second one is just a text value that says last year. So specify the font size, all this type of stuff, and it says last year. And in this horizontal concatenation, what I have is the previous year value. So the main value that you can see here is the current year value. Then you have the percentage. Then you have something that just says last year. And then you have last year's value. So you can see the current year, the current net sales is 5,262 euros, which is 5.6% higher than last year, which was 4,983 euros. Pretty clear, I think. And that's the horizontal concatenation. Clear, love it. The final part is a bar chart. Now a bar chart is pretty standard stuff in Vega Light. Um, so really the only thing that's complex here is was a design choice that I made, which is to say, I wanted the highest value within the date range to be orange. So as you can see, each visualization has one orange bar. The one in the bottom left has two, why? Because it's the same value twice and those two are the, the highest. How have I done that? I've done it with a transform, something that I've covered in previous videos. And the transform just says basically transform window, which is how you create the rank. OP rank, so I want to rank my values as now I've called it rank, which might be confusing. So I'm going to, to demonstrate, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to go with my classic Jeff. So I'm going to say rank, call the rank Jeff. And I need to change that here as well. So rank as Jeff. So rank it, call the rank Jeff. And what I want to rank are my net sales and I want to rank them descending, not ascending. Therefore, the top value will be one because it's descending. Then when I get to my bar, I've done the, all the standard stuff, mark, type, bar, width, 
I'm just being very picky. I could have said 0.85, but I said 0.95. I could have said whatever I wanted, but I liked it that. So I've said I want the width of my band to be 0.95. Put on a tooltip, because I think it's cool that you can use a tooltip on these cards for sure. And then this is the part where the rank comes into play. Color, expression, if datum Jeff, so if the rank is equal to one, then give me this hex code, which is orange. If it's not, give me the other hex code, which is this like matte black, which I like using apparently. And that's it. That's the complexity really of this bar chart. So that's pretty much it. The rest of it is of course the encoding for the bar, which is specifying that the X should be field date, um, the time unit, all this type of stuff. Um, standard bar chart stuff, there's nothing in here that you maybe wouldn't see elsewhere, you know? And that's it. I've now set up my bar chart. And when I've done the bar chart, you'll see that's it. You, all everything's just been closed off now and I get to this square bracket. And this square bracket is the end of my vertical concatenation, which means it's the end of this block of code. It's the end of this part of the card. So here, from line eight, down to line 149, just to close it up so you can see it, line eight to line 149, all I've done to create this are really, was it one, two, three, four, five, five text marks and a bar chart. Yes, it might seem complicated because I've used a concatenation in a concatenation in a concatenation, but I showed you how to do that in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, you should probably check that out actually. Um, but it's how you use it. It's a really nice way of, of using it. One beautiful thing about creating a bar chart in Deneb is that you still have the functionality of a drill through. So all these are all functional, you know? So I have a drill through page with dates. So if I said, okay, this date's the highest, I can drill through and I go to the page that deals with dates, whatever. It's still a very functional visualization, which, which I really enjoy. Um, and again, so eight through one, four, nine is just this concatenation. And I'm not gonna go through all the others because why? Because they're identical. The only thing that's different in every single other one of these um, parts of the card is of course, I've got to change stuff like I've got to change, I've got net sales, I've got to go to orders. So for example, on net sales, when I did my main um, text there, I specified I wanted it to be a currency, but I've just changed that for orders because orders isn't a currency. That's just the number of orders. It's, it's not a currency. So I just tweak little bits and pieces, which takes minutes less for sure, put in the correct metric, and then it's done. One thing that I didn't mention at the very start, I said spacing here 50, and that just spaces out the concatenation. So if I say spacing zero, you would see that they're all like really tightly packed together, which doesn't look good at all. So you just choose how spaced out you want those concatenations to be. The final thing to say there. And just in case you're thinking, why doesn't it say something, give it context? So the reason I didn't put a legend on my bar chart, for example, to, to display what the orange value means is I like to have that actually on the subtitle of my visualization, which is a standard Power BI formatting, yeah? So here it says orange bars indicate the highest value within the selected day range. Now, the reason I've done that is because I think it looks nicer to have it that way than to have it within the axes of every single bar chart, especially when you're dealing with like a card, because you can make it look too packed very quickly, you know? You have to ensure that when you're designing it, there are not too many elements, which is why I've done spacing to make sure it's not too cramped together. You might disagree with that, and that's, of course, completely fine, fully respect that but that's why I chose not to. So you still see what the orange means because of the, um, 
the subtitle. And that is how I created this card in Deneb. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it made sense. Um, let me know what you think, like, subscribe, all those YouTube type things, and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.